this producer and host of divine speech in African traditionalism is relying on one of his classics, Southern Winds, African Breezes, to reconstruct Africans place in human history and to dedicate this presentation to the great man who is now an ancestor. Your creation is everywhere. This is what Listabel Middleton is talking to this black child. Look around you, black child. Your creation is everywhere. Though painted, distorted, and given new names, they bear your print just the same. I'm showing this picture because it speaks directly to what Listerville Middleton's poem is all about. It was during this trip that Middleton's poem made a lot of sense to me. It was during this trip that my eyes were sharpened to know what I see. It was during this trip that my ears were tuned to understand what I hear. This is yours truly with his wife, Joan Ayala, and Dr. Ndugo Khan, Babalao, Ifa Kayode in Aswam, Egypt. Can you tell what Dr. Ndugo Khan is holding? This is what Middleton, Listabel Middleton wants you to do, to sharpen your eyes so that you know what you see. Right now, I want you to look at this picture and tell me what Dr. Ndugo Khan is holding. If you look at it carefully, there's something white that he's holding. It's a flail. It's a symbol of authority, a symbol of power. He came to Egypt fully prepared. Three days after the ASCA conference in Aswam, my group taught Dendera, sometimes spelled Tantera. It was at Dendera that I drew my final conclusion that the soil I was standing on was one of the land my people lived and developed. I could speak to the local land deity. I felt at home as if I was back home in Sumbrungo. Let us take a full look at this slide. I W N I equals a wuni. The original name of Dendera, an Egyptian city, was spelled I W N I. I W N I is the same as a wuni. A wuni is a person named after God. No child gets to be named a winning unless that child is a twin. It is always the first child who gets this name. The second twin is normally given the name Atenga, which means land, or Anaba, which means king. Why is E.A. E. E. Wallace Beck telling the world that Nile Valley civilization or high culture came from somewhere else? Let's go to slide 10. After Europeans had already dehumanized African in order to enslave him and colonize him, except a few intellectuals like Gerald Massey, no European intellectual dared to admit that Africans once read and wrote. The Frafra, or Grusu people of Ghana, have a writing through a prophetic deity called Bakolgo. But these are the alphabets of the African writing, the writing that E. A. Wallace Beck would rather deny us. And these are the Adenkra symbols by the accounts 
of Ghana. Do you see some similarities in the two types of writing? Medonetta. Adenkra symbols. On slide 17 to 19, there are not too many people who would translate the word of God to be writing unless they are privy to African history with knowledge of the various gods and their responsibilities in the universe. Divine speech is another phrase that means writing. These slides continue to talk to us about the God of knowledge and medicine. Jehuti plays his dual role of being the teacher of writing and reading, but also the teacher of medicine. The original writing known to man taught him by God, Jehuti. So this is the Medonetta. So if you see an M, an owl for M, a hand for D, a chick for U or W, we spell meadow. And the flag stands for God. This is the name of the ancient writing of Africa called the meadow nature or word of God. The flag is God. So that's where when somebody bends one nation's flag, they can go to war because they're trying to bend their God. Medonetta, the writing of Africans along the Nile. This is the writing Jehuti taught Africans to write and read. The writing of Bear stands for the then nation of Kemet before she was given a new name, Egypt. The new name of Medonetta has been changed. After the conquest of Kemet by the Greeks, the name of this writing was changed from Medonetta to Hieroglyphics. The Greeks also changed the name of Kemet to Egypt. What is interesting about the new name for this African writing is that even though the Greeks had their own writing, upon inspecting the Medonetta, they concluded that it was holy carvings. Hero means holy in Greek, and graphics means carvings. Why the Greeks saw holiness in this writing, even though they had their own, is beyond anybody's comprehension. But that was divine power of writing. The slides 20 to 23, these four slides deal with knowing and understanding. There are so many words we use occasionally or casually on a daily basis without knowing or understand what they mean. Let's start with one city and one internationally recognized monument. Before we even get to that, this is the god Jehuti. The god is holding two staffs with cobras wrapped around the staffs. He was not only the god of writing and reading, he was the god of knowledge and speech and medicine. His beak is where the fountain pen came from. What is his given new name, To? The Greeks changed his name from Jehuti to To. The word taught, the past tense of think, is credited to To. He was credited for being an original thinker or original thinking God. You made a serpent the symbol of the healing arts. That is Elizabeth Middleton talking to the black child. Jehuti, the god of writing, was also the god of knowledge. He introduced the study of medicine. Jehuti is seen holding two staffs with cobras wearing crowns 
wrapped around the staffs. These staffs and the cobras were later chained to what is known today as the caduceus. This is the picture of Jehuti, God of many. This is the God, Jehuti, holding two staffs with cobras wrapped around the staffs. He was not only the God of writing and reading, he was also the God of knowledge, speech, and medicine. You see, from here to here. And this is the new name for those cobras wrapped around the staffs. It's called Caduceus. The next four slides deal with knowing and understanding. There are so many ways we use casually on a daily basis without knowing or understand what they mean. Let us start with the city and one internationally recognized monument. Most people know this symbol as a sphinx, but what was its original name? The sphinx was the new name given to this ancient African god known as the son of God. His name is Heru. The name of the symbol is Herum Eket, which means Heru in the horizon. This is the statue of Ramses the Great in the city of Memphis in Egypt. That is his given new name. Let us take a look at his history. Memphis. There are presently two known cities or towns in Africa still with the original names of Memphis. Memphis in Egypt remains Memphis. Memphis town, a town in Akropon in the eastern region of Ghana. The area is inhabited by the Akwapim people of Ghana. The Akwapim people are well established when dealing with ancient Kemetic history with the names of places and people. This is an undamaged Herum Eket, still intact in the new city of Memphis, which was once called Memphis. Slides 24 to 26. I had to bring my elder brother, who was a high priest in Barakabako, the African traditionalism practiced by the Frafra or Grusu people of Burkina Faso and Ghana to this presentation because of a conversation I had with him about something I had no, no knowledge about. But he told me I will find it one day. Where did I find it? Where else? This is my elder brother, Barnaba Ayalbe Ayala. The, the red crown he's wearing is the symbol of his status in the religion. He was a high priest. Nyentuna, Nyentuna, God works. The symbol on the next slide was erected by my elder brother in front of our house in the village of Sumbrongo in 1989. I was startled when he asked me if I knew what he had erected. I said no. In his usual calm demeanor, he advised me to keep on reading. The symbol is called Yentona, or God works. I found this again in Memphis, Egypt, 10 years after my brother had passed on. This is it. This limestone base of a column was erected by Ramses the Great in Memphis, now Memphis, in ancient Kemet now Egypt. In Gurune, it is called Yintona. This is exactly the symbol my elder brother erected. 